First, we'll give a big round of applause for Mr. Subrancho, who is uh, so, so eloquently um, touched our hearts, you know, with an honest message. And I, and I think that's very critical. The work that um, Subrancho Ji and I am, um, Calcutta, along with the Tata Group, is doing is very important for India. And, you know, putting these seeds of thought into the minds of young into young minds, you know, that are ready to take on the world is very important. And I really appreciate uh, the work you're doing, Subhangshu Ji. Well done. Nice, nice talk. So, having, you know, listened to Subhangshu Ji and his, you know, passionate uh, conversation with all of you, I would like to kind of talk a little bit about how do you start? Now, suppose you, you do want to be um, a social entrepreneur. You know, the difference between and I, I sometimes the lines between an entrepreneur and a social entrepreneur are very blurred, to be honest with you, for me. Because if you're an entrepreneur, you're always doing something to make things a little better. Right? You're doing things that will make a little bit more efficient. Or you'll create something radically new that will change the world. Right? Change the world. So all of these efforts, whether you're a social entrepreneur, or an entrepreneur, do make a difference to the world, right? You are impacting people in some way. So my, when I use the word entrepreneur, I'm going to use it throughout my conversation seamlessly, right? If that's okay with you guys, is that okay? Because that, that makes the conversation easier. So everybody who wants to get into, you know, entrepreneurship, the very thought of it, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you wonder, because when I started, you know, to kind of invest in myself. Entrepreneurship is nothing but investing in yourself. The first step for entrepreneurship is when you make a decision to saying that, you know what, I've done this, I've got my degree, I've got a little bit of experience, uh, or maybe I found a problem I'd like to solve, and I think it's time for me to invest in myself. I'm not talking of money. I'm talking of effort into saying, you know, I have a thought process, and I think this thought process is going to help the world, right? When you make that decision to invest in yourself, no matter what it is, whether you want to invest yourself as a writer, as a poet, as a singer, right? As a, a CEO of a small startup, when you make that decision, you've already started your journey into becoming an entrepreneur. You don't know that now, but you have, right? Sometimes you... You, you walk on the street and you see something happening. You said, I wish, I wish I could do something. I think I can do that better. That thought is very important. Like, for example, I live in Gandipet, which is about 20, 20 minutes from here. Next to the outer ring road, <clears throat> there is a service road, right, that takes you from along the outer ring road. Now, when I moved here about maybe five, six years ago, Everything was completely empty on that side. So it was fabulous. I could come to Gachipoli in, in hardly two, three minutes. Today, it took me 25 minutes to get here. Right? You know why? There was no traffic. There were 15 speed breakers from, on the service road from uh, Gandipet to Gachipoli. Now, who put these uh, speed breakers? Is there any... Pardon me? I don't know who put them, right? No speed breaker looks the same. At one place, there's 20 bumps. Another place, there's three bumps. One place is only one bump, one foot high. So I started to think. I said, why is this happening? I mean, we're a progressive government, right? Telangana is doing some amazing things with respect to formulating change. The government is very proactive. Then how... How did the speed bumps come in? So I stopped and I said, near one speed bump, and I walked by and I asked the construction going on. I said, who put this speed bump? He said, we put it. I said, why? He said, so that trucks coming from our road will not be hampered. So we can freely come onto the road and turn left or right. I said, Are? this is a road, the traffic, first right of traffic is for the people going on the road. Now imagine there are around 50 villas, communities that are going to come on that road. Can you imagine what's going to happen? 
Every villa community that builds a, a community puts a speed bump. Now 50 are going to come, so I basically will have to hop all my way from Gandipe to here. Now why am I telling you this? 90% of the time, most people in life walk by a problem and never think, what can I do about it? Right? You find a problem. You curse the government, like Subhrang Shuji said. Or you curse the environment. And you say, no, this is a lousy country. I, this is the reason why I want to go to the US. Roads are smooth. So I've decided today, because I, I wanted to make sure I'm on time over here for, the, for, this, for this talk. And I knew I'm going to get late. So unfortunately, my car rattled a lot by the time I came here because I was driving a little fast. But I'm going to take photographs of these bumps. And I'm going to write a small article and send it to, you know, KTR and, you know, um, some of the people that I know and, and say, hey, you know, what are we going to do about this? If every developer starts to put speed bumps on the road as they want, you will never get to a place you want to get no matter how smart you are. Okay? So what is my definition of smart cities? Removing the dumbness. So when, when people talk about smart cities, and I'm digressing a little bit because I want to kind of let, open your minds up into thinking. Everyone is saying smart cities. What is smart? Your net bills come on time. You don't have to worry about going somewhere and paying your bills. There's money in a bank. Money seamlessly goes out. You paid all your bills. Everything happens. You go, uh, in a, you don't have to stand in a line. You can book it. To, whatever. It makes your life easier. Smart cities are cities where your life essentially becomes very easy. But my definition of a smart city, and they're putting technology in. No matter how much technology you put in, if I can't come 20 kilometers in at least 20 minutes, going at you know, 60 kilometers an hour, that city is not smart. Right? So the first thing I thought was, first, I, let me identify what's dumb. You remove the dumb you get a little smarter. You know, somebody asked Michelangelo, I just came back from Italy last week. I was in Europe. <clears throat> and I was at the uh, Vatican. And there's one particular statue called the Pieta. It's, it's carved by Michelangelo. It's a statue where Mother Mary is sitting and there's Jesus in her arms. And it's very sad. Sad statue. But it's the most beautiful piece of art I've ever seen. It's carved by Michelangelo. So somebody asked Michelangelo, you know, how do you carve? What is it that you keep in your mind? Because there's no drawings, there's no picture, there's nothing. He's sitting and carving statues. And they said, how do you carve the statue? And his answer was, I close my eyes and remove pieces of rock that don't belong there. And the statue comes out. So he just sits there and takes out the stuff that's not necessary. He says, if I want to carve you know, Mother Mary, I take out all the rocks that are not supposed to be Mother Mary. And Mother Mary evolves. Right? So similarly, I think that kind of a thought process where you challenge yourself. And I I'm urge you because, you know, all of you, this is a fantastic platform because you have an opportunity today to kind of plant some vital seeds of change within yourselves that will stay with you for the rest of your life. The reason is you don't have to give up anything to be an entrepreneur. This is my experience in my own life. Okay, everything I've done in my life has just been um, mostly intuitive. Okay, a lot of it, you know, things that I didn't know, like Subhrangshuji said, you don't need to know everything. You know, when uh, I did things because I was passionate. Right, I wanted to be with music all my life. I'm an accidental music director. When I was in the US, I wanted to come back to India after 14 years. I'm an accidental CEO of a multinational company. I was working in that company and I said, you know, I want to make education faster and I want to make sure that people learn languages faster. So I started a company called Liquid Crystal where we built a mother compiler for 20 languages. Even today, there's no company that has done that. Unfortunately, the company didn't go over anywhere because the internet bubble burst when we were doing it, just when we were going public we had to give up the whole project after uh, raise, I raised about maybe six, seven million dollars. This is almost 10 years ago, a company called Liquid Crystal. Accident. I did that again because it was, I was passionate about change, right? 
And then when the company left, I, uh, I did one, uh, you know, I did an album in the US and then I released it myself. And that went to number one. And some producer saw me and he said, you know, why don't you come to Andhra Pradesh and make a movie? And at that point, Liquid Crystal, you know, was folding. And I said, why not come and do some films for the fun of it? Accidental music director. So all I'm saying is that you have to nurture that little thoughts of dissatisfaction that come to you from time to time. You know, whether it's in an environment, whether it's in a classroom, whether it's your own life, whether it's something that you see around, and you foster those seeds of dissatisfaction. And you say, I need to change something. I need to do things a little different. I need to make this a better place. You have started your journey without your knowledge into being an entrepreneur. So when I came to Hyderabad and I was doing these films, I was also consulting for large companies because my core competency was building brands for multinationals and setting up sales offices throughout the world. I, la I ran a large corporation called Sybase. So my core competency was going to you know, Mexico, setting up a sales office, hiring the team, let it lose. Go to Munich, set up a sales office. And I did that for Sybase in India. So when I left Liquid Crystal, I said, you know, okay, while I do films, let me consult for companies, right? Have them set up offices in India. I was doing the both for multinationals and Indians, Indian companies. And then one company came to me and said, you know, we are, uh, we are doing something in solar energy and lighting and uh, we'd like you to build a plan for us on how to um, light up villages in India. And you know, the surprising thing about life is, whether you like it or not, there is a force unknown to you that slowly drives you where you belong, whether you like it or not. You know, and I'm not talking about God. I'm not talking of, you know, strange things that you don't understand. These are things that you voice or you want to voice because you know from my childhood um, I picked up a guitar because somebody else in the class was getting more attention from the girls in the class that was the only reason I picked up a guitar I said you know if Peter can do it I should also you know get a little bit of attention in school so I went to Peter and I learned my music and I, he taught me a few chords with three chords I made up my songs and I sang whatever I wanted Okay, I was not that much of a hit in class, but at least, you know, that seed was planted. So I kept telling myself, I'll be a rock star. I didn't know how, I didn't look like a rock star, I still don't. And, and you know, but when the seed gets planted, something happens to your life. And life kind of leads you to become who you want to become. As long as you nurture those seeds. The reason I'm telling you this is because I'm a living proof of that. I never knew I'll be a music director. I never, that was not my ambition. I never was, it, it was not even in my mind remotely. I never watched Telugu films when I grew up. I don't speak Telugu that eloquently, right? I came back to India and next thing I know, I'm composing music for Telugu films, right? So I came to India for Sybase. I never been a CEO before. I was running a multinational company. I never been an entrepreneur. I started Liquid Crystal. So anyway, I was doing consulting for this company uh, for, for, for solar lights. And just to let you know, I have a master's in heat transfer and energy systems from IIT Karakpur. Right? I gave it up. I went to US, did an MS in computer science. I gave that up. And I jumped into sales and marketing. Right? That's what I am. My core competency was. But life has a way of bringing you back to where you belong. And where I belonged was energy. So suddenly I was doing consulting, I looked at all, this, all the lights these guys were designing, and I said, you know, where do you get these lights? He said, no, we get them from China. I said, fine. Can I have a light because I want to test them? He said, why do you want to test? We're asking for a strategy. Tell us how to build a strategy. I said, to build a strategy, I need to be passionate about what you're selling. Let me see a light. So I looked at these lights, and then I started going back into my knowledge base about energy and solar and all that stuff stuff that I have not touched in a long, long time. And I realized this was junk. The lights were just pure junk. They would not work beyond three to six months. And the solar panels had very low efficiencies, which would not keep these lights sustainable. They would not work. So I went back to the CEO of the company. I said, you know, these lights won't work. Why are you selling them? He said, why do you care? 
We are getting orders from the government. We are installing them. I said, can I go to a village you're installing? He said, Baba, we hired you for us. giving us a branding strategy. We gave you a light. Now you want to go to the village. I said, yes, I want to see how they use the light. And they were kind of, okay, fine. So I went to this remote village, off-grid. You know, 300 million people in this country live in darkness. 300 million people live in absolute darkness after sunset. No light. So I went to this village and I was shocked because after 6 o'clock, nothing happens after the sun sets. They have the little kerosene lamps they bring out, they put into their houses, small huts. And I slept outside a hut. They gave me a nice small jute bed. So I slept there and I, I watched. It was peaceful, it was beautiful. You can see those fireflies all around and these little lamps. And they breathe in those same fumes that come from the lamps. These women and children, because the men sometimes sleep outside, so they are safe. The women and children stay inside. And four lakh women and children in India die every year because of indoor inhalation. They inhale these suits. So I started looking at all this and I said, you know, how much does it take to build a sustainable light? So I went back to these guys and I said, you know, I advise you to, I'll, I'll help you build a better light. He says, All right, but this guy is mad. We've given him money to do consulting for us. We've given him a light. And now this guy wants to build a light for us. I said, yes. They said, no, thank you very much. But uh, I think you, they're very happy with the consulting. You can leave. And that's when my journey started. I decided I was going to travel for the next six months to at least 100 villages and see how light is used in these villages. And that's what I did. And that's when I started a company called Earth and Glow. And we lit up about 20 villages now in Manipur, right? And we do indoor and outdoor lighting, distributed solar, smart, every, every environment, we, we call it energy harvester. So every energy harvester has got phone charging. You can, you, can, you can charge two lights that are, I wish I bought them, I could have shown them to you. You can hang them from a ceiling, you can hold them with your hand, you can use them for work. It base, and it's a powerful light, 4 watt light that gives out about roughly 500 lumens of light. Why should poor people have 1 watt LEDs? You know, you don't want them to be a checkbox in an Excel spreadsheet. You want to give these guys something meaningful. And when you want to do something meaningful, that's when you begin to become a social entrepreneur slowly. Because you realize that money in doesn't mean money out. Money in means more money in. More money in means beg, borrow. And slowly I found the challenges of being a social entrepreneur. Right? There's only so much of your money you put in. And then I realized that I needed to, every VC I tapped money. When I was Liquid Crystal, I raised $4 million like that for IT. No problem. I went and pitched an idea. I said, here's a, here's a fantastic idea. People take a week to 10 days to learn C++. I'll make them learn C++ in less than 24 hours. How will you do that? Well, that's what my product is. And we'll do that for 24 languages. It was a fantastic sell. One pitch, one slide pitch. I raised one million in the first, first year. In four years, three years, we raised another three million dollars. Four million dollars I raised on the whole. No problems, right? Now, for other than to raise 20 lakhs, 25 lakhs, 5 lakhs became a challenge because it was not sexy. It was boring work. I have to travel to villages. I have to deal with, you know, uh, the local village leaders. I have to deal with the politicians. Why are you coming here? So we got one, um, one village to light up in Andhra Pradesh, okay, near the mining areas. And so uh, the deal was closed. They gave us, and every village for 100 homes, we roughly cost 20 lakhs. We light up all 100 homes, indoors and outdoors. Every 10 homes get a street light, they get, they get lighting, they get phone charging. It's fantastic. When we lit up these villages in Manipur, you should have seen the joy on their faces. Right, so anyway, I get this uh, small deal in, uh, in Andhra Pradesh to light up this village near the mining. And we went there with our poles, and I have a small team, five, six engineers. We did the survey, we did the energy audit, figured out where to put the solar panels, where the sun is rising, and all that stuff. And uh, the next day, 
uh, a group of young men came to us and said, Anal Pilisna Gumbi. Anal. I said, Who is Anas? I said, fine, I want to see who this Anna is. So I called my engineers, let's go meet the Anna. I said, no sir, you go alone. We'll, <laughs> we'll stay here. So I went. I went into the jungles and Anna's are basically Naxalites. Right? So there were a bunch of 20 people and uh, who asked me all sorts of questions. Why are you here? Why are you putting lights? They are very happy. Without lights, they're happy. What? You suddenly think you're a big government official. I said, listen, boss, I'm not a government official. And luckily, one of them was my, was my fan. She said, Pawan Kalyan Pat Pan And so I'm just saying, you know, how, how life works. And I sang the song. And they were very happy. And they saw that I was not a threat. So they allowed me to put my lights, and I put my lights, and next day they came, uploaded all the lights and went away. Took them off and sold them off. So these are the challenges. These are challenges you will face as a social, social entrepreneur. So it is not enough to have an idea. So that's when I, I realized I'm struggling for money. I have to fight with, you know, with, with the environment. I have to fight with the system. And then I have to convince my family that I'm doing the right thing. You know, the CEO of a multinational company as an expat, house paid for, card paid for, had a secretary. I pick up the phone, I fly business class, first class, wherever I want in the world. And now suddenly, I've asked my wife to buy me a bus ticket to go to Ankapalli to check out a village. And she's saying, why are we doing this? What is the necessary for us, necessity for us to do this? You know, why, why, are, we, why are we struggling, you know? And I, do, I said, okay, I'm not going to do that many movies. I'm going to focus on this. So, you know, it's just that, you know, you have to make, in this whole excitement of, you know, making a change, there are all these challenges that you face. And the reason why I'm telling you all this is, despite all this burden, challenges, whatever you want to call it, it is the most rewarding journey anybody can have. Because even if you've made a difference to one family, you know, it, it is a phenomenal feeling of fulfillment. So, I decided at that point, I'm going to grow Earth and Glow organically, but I wanted to find out what it takes for people to give me money. Right? So, the moment that thought came into my mind, I wanted to find out why an investor thinks. Why should an investor give me? I'm asking for two crores. It's not a whole lot of money. Two crores is not a whole lot of money for someone to invest in Earth and Glow. But my intentions are honest. I can light up at least 100 villages a year with a little money. We can grow up to 500 villages. We can be a $50 million company in the six years. I can show the path. Why is it so hard for me to raise two, two crores? So when that mind, thought entered my mind, in about a week, I got a call from United Seed Fund, which is a VC. I went to them for money. They didn't give it to me. I got a call back from the CEO, Will Pool. He said, Ramana, you know, I thought he was going to give me money. I said, Ramana, I really like your passion. Earth and Glow is fantastic. And I, said, I was thinking, okay, now my two crores is there. I want you to come work for me. I said, what? I want you to come work for us. We need passionate entrepreneurs like yourself. I said, Baba, I need money. He said, I know. You help me find entrepreneurs like yourself in areas of education, healthcare, agriculture. Unfortunately, we don't have energy. And I promise you, I'll help you get some funding down the line. So I went back to my wife and I said, yes, so here's another opportunity that's come. She said, I'm, I'm not talking, you do what you want. So I joined them. I joined them only because I wanted to find out what it takes for an investor to give money to entrepreneurs. I wanted to know, how do I think like an investor? And out of that one single thought, how to think like an investor, the whole speed to seed program came into place, and that's how I met Shubhrang Suji. Because then I started tying up with incubators and accelerators in the country, talking to entrepreneurs, and suddenly I realized that there was a need for people like me to reach out to people like you so that you understand what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Right? So I've left United Seed Fund. Now 
another large VCS company. I'm working with Antel Ventures, and we look at high tech. But I continue to work with Earth and Glow. I grow my company organically, right? So I want to lead, leave you with two or three things. First thing is, when you see a problem, don't dismiss it as a problem. Anything in your life, OK? Because when you see a problem, that is your opportunity for starting an idea. Number one. Number two, when you have, when, you, when that is ingrained into you, that you've seen a problem, I have an idea, and start to build on the idea without talking about VC funding or without talking about, you know, what does it take, where do I go, should I join an incubator, actually, forget all that question. Think what can you do with the resources that you have to build a very small prototype of the idea, right? Now, if you don't have money to build a prototype, that's when people like Shubhrang Shoji and incubators and accelerators like T-Hub or Triple IT, whatever, there's so many centers in this country that help you kind of nourish that idea and build it into a prototype. While you're doing this, I urge you, see the thing, the fact that I traveled to 100 villages, I've lived with villagers, I've slept on, on the beds outside their homes in the nights, bitten by mosquitoes, afraid of snake bikes and robbers and naxalites and whatever, right? Know who your customer is. You have to absolutely figure out who's going to use that prototype. Third thing is, how much money will they pay for this solution? What will you pay for it? Because ultimately, if it can't be free, then you become an NGO. You can do that also. You can go by that path. But even NGOs need money to survive. So they go to somebody else, get money, then they buy from you, and they implement it. Right? So the fourth approach is don't give up your passion to, you know, if you, some of you want to go abroad to study, you want to work in multinational companies or your national companies, you want to get a job experience, go and do it. I have two masters, masters in computer science and a masters in heat transfer and energy systems. I've worked for about over two decades in multinational organizations, right? I've done stuff that has, where I followed my heart. But I've always kept the seeds of dissatisfaction in my mind, and they've always led to me to ideas that I could implement while I was doing this. So sometimes you can do stuff and change the world being where you are, leveraging what you've got, and not necessarily break off and, uh, and, and, and turn into something that society puts you down as. You don't have, you can always rebrand yourself, right? Now there's entrepreneurship in residence, all sorts of funny names are there out there that you can use to convince people who you are, right? And um, I, I really wish all of you, you know, fantastic journeys as you go forward, you know, keep hope alive. Uh, let those little seeds of dissatisfaction always be in your mind, whether they're dissatisfaction with your family, with your friends, with your environment, with your office, with your school, with your profs, whoever it is. Because those seeds of dissatisfaction actually help you refine the person that is inside of you. And may you all be like Michelangelo who takes away pieces of rock, you know, to bring out the true sculpture that exists in this world, right? And I wish you great journeys. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Shubhra. Uh, I just I just sort of fly off to another place. So if there are about six or seven questions, I'll take them, if you have any. Otherwise, you know, uh, follow me on Twitter, at Ramana Gogula, capital R, capital G. Okay, and we can always chat on Twitter, and I'm going to be more active on Twitter, um, you know, putting out articles and <clears throat> talking about, you know, my, how these journeys can help you. So follow me on Twitter, and I'll be happy to respond. So, yes, yes, sir. This is not a question, this is a request. Yes. Uh, no session by Ramana can end without the music, huh? Yeah, yeah. Do you guys agree? <laughs> huh? So after the question, I think it should end with the music. Uh, and, uh, and you got, all should join, right? Uh -huh. Something which they all can join. <laughs> Shubhanshu Ji, it's a long time to have sung without my guitar, so. They will help you. Oh, okay, we'll see. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right. So right. they will help you. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll take the questions.
Yeah, please. Yeah. You need about 20 lakhs. Yeah. You, you know, I am looking at a social enterprise entrepreneurship model where when we divide these 100 households, each household like 20,000 yeah. thing and yeah. all, and inspiring one college, you know, Dr. Kalam's mission of no, no, but, but this 20 lakhs also in, uh, includes every 10 homes get one street light. Ah, yeah. ah, all right. So everything included. Yeah. So we divide that into micro projects and let different student teams own up, you know, how do they mobilize and uh, that 25,000 whatever yeah. uh, and all. We can involve NRIs, all yeah. alumni of all associations and all. I would like um, to know. No, no, I, I think it's a great. See, I'll tell you what, how it came to me. I, this idea came to me. See, when I was in the US, uh, when, I, when I got Sybase, you know, so the Sybase came to me and said, Ramana, you know, we have a problem in India. We want you to go and set up a sales office. You know, we are making revenues of $500,000. We have a potential to make $10 million a year. Help us get us there. I said, fine. So before I came back, I made a promise to myself that I have to make an album. Because my friends in India were going to ask me, hey, you went, you said Rockstar, America, this, that, where's the album? So in three months before I left US, I made this album called ALLA, right? And, and I didn't know I was an entrepreneur. I made 2,000 CDs, me and my partner. So we decided, who's going to buy this? Nobody knows us. Nobody has heard our music. You know, we, we have, we have uh, a CD with about eight songs or 12 songs, I think. How are we going to sell it? So I told Kush, my partner, I said, Kush, we'll divide this 2,000. You take 1,000, I'll take 1,000, right? And what we'll do is we'll find friends among ourselves, 50 friends who can sell 20 CDs each. 50 sell friends who will sell 20 CDs each. We've sold it. He said, man, how can I ask? These are my friends. They'll say, give me free. I said, no. If they are your friends, then they will support your passion. If he is not willing to give you, how much was it we sold it for? $15. That, was, that time CDs were expensive. That much money for each CD. They're not our friends. You know, they're just people who support us and they are our support system. And these are all people in the US. It's not a big deal, right? You won't believe it. In about a month and a half, we sold 2,000 CDs. Sold. It's over. Done with made our money, and people loved it. People started ordering more CDs. So your model, where you do distributed, you, you, you take a burden, and you kind of find lots of people. But you need, you need that passion. You need people who believe in it. See, you cannot, you cannot say, here's a problem. This is my, I found this problem. It's great. You also join me. You have to be passionate about the same problem. So if you find passionate people who want to kind of go ahead and do this, I'll work with you into you know, identifying a village and, and doing it. It's not a problem. Just a small extension. Yeah. Coming to your bumps, yeah. okay, you thought of I, you know, making an article and presenting. In a democracy, we need to demonstrate how many people, uh, if you rather give it as a project, apprenticeship project, we would like to involve some college students, yeah. identifying the, who are all the stakeholders, who wanted it and who don't want it and create an objective scientific way of influencing. That is like a... Abs absolutely. Next no, I, I'm, only, I'm only saying, I only put that as an... Ex I, because this morning, I was so frustrated. Because every two minutes, I had to stop near a speed breaker. And this is a main road. Sure. This is not even like you know, a, a small side road. It's a main service road, you know, that links up two, village, two towns. So, yeah. yeah, I'll be happy to collaborate and work. Yep, yep, go ahead. Right. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Can't study. Summer yeah. May, there are like most of the days there won't be light after noon and they won't be able to study. So I told my students that I'll come up with something like solar panels or lighting and all. But when I asked someone, they told for uh, 100 kV, like they told some 2 lakh rupees, which yeah. is like more. See, here's, here's so the problem. People don't understand. I know, I know Modi is doing a great job you know, lighting up villages, <clears throat> just from a technical point of view. You know, the sun, when the sun puts out energy and it falls on a panel, what is the output of the panel, basically? It's DC. 
okay it's dc power what the government is doing is it takes its dc power sticks a inverter in the middle and what do you do you convert dc into ac right you lose about 20 to 30 percent of the power and then what they're doing they're taking a wire because it's a mini grid and they're pushing it across to different homes how much wire losses do you lose in india roughly does anyone know 70 percent 30 to 40 percent of our electricity is lost as transmission losses in this country right then there's another 10 percent of people robbing this power they, they take and tap a wire and they pull it off so then what do you do when the power comes here you're taking a laptop and you're sticking it into this into this socket now what is a laptop dc is 19.4 volts a laptop requires 19.4 volts dc power so then you're taking ac power and you have a small transformer you're converting back into dc what's your phone it's a dc thing you got a small transformer there. now you're sticking it again to ac socket and stepping it down to 5 volts dc so what is this so the villages that i light up i'll always keep them in dc i will never move them to ac you know why because it's off grid the government can never put a wire there it costs you twenty thousand dollars for one kilometer of electric wire that is the cost twenty thousand dollars to get one kilometer of wire now imagine someone saying 50 kilometers away how much does it cost a million dollars just to put some wire up to 50 kilometers away so why would you do that just give them distributed solar so every home has a solar in a panel <clears throat> give them lighting first improve their livelihoods when they make a little money give them a fan dc a little bit more money give them a television dc computer is anyway dc phone is dc now if they're really lucky and tomorrow the government decides to put power to the village they just take that power and stick it to an energy harvester and it becomes a ups so nothing changes so light works as it is the fans work as it is you take the power instead of using solar panels you unplug it plug the ac supply into it and you use it like a ups so these are creative things that you know uh, that you can do there's so much stuff you know you, we have 157 million hectares of agriculture farmland in this country india uses 25 million pumps to drive these farmlands roughly ac pumps okay 20 percent of india's electricity goes to running these pumps do you know that 25 million inefficient ac pumps are being run in this country to give our farmlands the water for irrigation 20 percent of our electricity that we generate in this country goes towards these inefficient pumps do you think dc has some meaning to this country of course it does we need dc pumps we need to move everyone to solar dc so yeah long so a long answer to your question but i'll be happy to interact with you yeah, right you I'll know like get, in, get in touch with me through the folks and we'll give you some advice on what to do yeah you can follow sir on twitter and he will answer your questions there yeah you can follow me on twitter at ramana gogula capital r a m n a g capital g o g u l a